not consume music, but consider it as an art form. Good morning to you in um, Norway. Yeah, good evening. Good evening there, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on Vancouver Island here in Canada. Welcome to this uh, Prague chat. Appreciate Thank you. Thanks, appreciate Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate you joining me. Well, first of all, let's establish uh, you're Bjorn Reese, uh, and you're a member of Airbag, uh, a progressive band in uh, Norway, and you also release solo albums. You have a brand new mini album coming out September 30th. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Introduce, introduce yourself to my audience. My audience are uh, mostly uh, progressive rock fans, you know, uh, um, alternative kind of music, non-mainstream kind of music. Yeah, well, I um, I live in Oslo in Norway, and uh, as you said, I'm uh, a member of uh, founding member of uh, Airbag. We've been together since um, the late '90s, I think, uh, and I've also been uh, releasing my uh, solo albums uh, for almost a decade now. And I grew up listening to a lot of the bands that you have on your wall there. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, mostly in my teens, growing up in the eighties, I I was completely into the hair band uh, metal stuff, um, but also more classic rock, uh, Kiss, Black Sabbath, White Snake. But later on, I uh, I, I sort of discovered Prague, I guess, uh, through Pink Floyd. Uh, one of my older sisters had Animals, which is still my favorite album. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that was <clears throat> what was my introduction to to uh, to Prague mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. By the time I I started to write my own music and learn to play guitar, and we started a band. Uh, bands like Porcupine Tree was uh, very influential uh, in my forming years as a as a musician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've lived in Norway all your life, then? Yeah, I have. I, I'm born and raised in in uh, the capital of Oslo. And uh, the airbag is a trio, and uh, are the other guys? Uh, they're kind of local, local musicians you met. Uh, how did how did that happen? Uh, forming airbag, we met. Uh, we, uh, airbag is sort of started uh, while we were in high school together uh, in the okay. uh, mid late nineties. Uh, so Asle, who is uh, who is the um, the vocalist, we've been together. Um, we met up in high school in I think in ninety four ninety five. So we started out as a um, uh, well, just basically jamming, sort of your uh, average uh, garage band, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and we learned to play play our instruments. That we 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 all um, we all came together. Um, as Pink Floyd fans, so we we started a Pink Floyd uh, tribute, uh, and we toured Norway and parts of Scandinavia uh, for about a decade, focusing on the uh, late sixties and and seventies Pink Floyd. Um, and then we, sometime in the late nineties, we um, we decided to write our own material. So, uh, so 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 the Pink Floyd project sort of um, evolved uh, into to airbag um and it took some time before release we released our first album we did some eps and some promotional stuff and uh, uh and a couple of albums later two of the guys uh that's been with the band since high school uh decided to leave for different reasons we, we you grew up you have other commitments and family and stuff but uh Asla and me has been together uh since the formation and we also have uh, Henrik who's been uh playing drums uh for uh for uh, well over a decade now tell me a little about your your new mini album or ep i guess uh coming out in september yeah um uh, the album uh, or the the mini album is called uh, a fleeting glimpse which uh to pink floyd fans should mean something and uh, it's it's a long uh, dream, I guess, that I've had to uh, to create something that 
uh, so, sort of it's an, uh, an homage to my influences and, and Pink Floyd as an influence for me and um, what they meant to my music and my writing. Um, I also have this uh, YouTube channel that I um, that's David Gilmore and guitar oriented and I often present stuff and record these short snippets of uh, music that sort of resemble Pink Floyd and I always get asked why don't you release this but it's it's only a minute or two of music so I took some of those ideas and some leftovers from uh, my previous album and uh, and wrote four original tracks um, that with the idea of uh, sort of blending me and my voice and my music with as many Pink Floyd references that I possibly could. And uh, you've also got a very special guest vocalist who's sang on one of the songs of this of this uh, new album you, you're releasing, which I uh, I guess your record company they forwarded me a, a a link so I could listen to your album through. And uh, really enjoyed uh, listening to your album a lot. I'm going to listen to it some more as well. Uh, tell Thank me you. a little. Tell tell me a little about your uh, your guest vocalist that you had on. Yeah, I uh, I'm very proud to have Durga McBroom uh, singing on the the single Dark Shadows, um, and um, it was an idea I had, and I and I contacted her and asked if she wanted to participate. And it's um, I remember uh, so so we so the the thing was that I had this this track uh, and I just sent it over to her and and um, asked her to do some specific parts uh, and she a couple of weeks later she sent it back and said uh, sorry I did probably did too much and and when I listened <laughs> back to it I I was completely in tears and uh, wow. it was so very special to hear. Yeah. her voice and the voice that's uh, a big part of Pink Floyd for me growing up in the 80s and 90s, yeah. uh, hearing that on my music. So that was a, a very special uh, special uh, thing. Uh, she does an amazing job in it. And uh, I think uh, it it brings something special to the to the project but, and um, and the song, obviously. That's wonderful. And uh, do you take do you take your solo work on the road live? Do you do any live shows, or is it just uh, just just the recordings you're releasing? Um, no, I have have toured uh, with uh, the uh, the uh, the albums that I have released before. Obviously, now it's been uh, everything's been down for for the past couple of years, but I'm. Looking forward to to playing some live this autumn and hopefully more next year. How do you like touring? Are you, do, you, do you really? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously the pandemic was a real uh, a challenge for a lot of musicians. Myself personally too. I, I had lots of gigs just completely dry up as soon as the pandemic mm-hmm. hit. So mm-hmm. uh, how how are you? Uh, how did you deal with the the, the pandemic? Uh, and and your you know your career as a musician um uh, well it's strange looking back at it now because while everything was closed down and we were uh, and we didn't have the chance to to tour i i feel that i've been quite busy anyway um i have a day job but um but also with my music i we um a couple of months into the pandemic we released the uh, the last airbag album uh thinking that everything was going to um open up after a couple of months and we were able to to tour that album but, but we haven't so we're going to do some shows mm-hmm. now that has been proposed mm-hmm. postponed uh, several times mm-hmm. and that's that's been frustrating um uh, mm-hmm. but uh, i've managed to write and release uh, a full solo album, everything to everyone. That's uh, that was out this April, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, I I went straight from that into this this uh, mini album. So for me, it's been in been a, a busy period. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm glad you were able to to stay uh, um, creative. I mean that 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 uh, I guess that's the challenge too. Uh, it, it does seem, though, now that the pandemic has uh, pretty much calmed down, that um, 
a lot of uh, bands are on tour. A lot of uh, new material is is coming out. I think mm. um, it seems a lot of musicians did take advantage of that time to mm. uh, focus on, I guess, songwriting and recording and things like that, which you can still do at home thanks to to uh, technology. Now, that's another question I have about re- your recording mm. process. Do you do a lot of uh, recording uh, in a home studio or do you find yourself going to regular studios? No, I, I do most of my recordings in my home studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, drums. Uh, I do that in a uh, professional studio, part because I can't uh, terrorize my neighbors with uh, <laughs> with drums, but, right. uh, but but also because it's it requires a whole different setup, a whole different production. You need a technician and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I so I always do that in uh, in a studio. We do that with airbag as well. Um, but my uh, my demos, my guitars, most of my guitars, uh, and all the acoustic stuff, uh, I do it. My, I do in my my uh, home recording studio. And so, basically, what you need is a is a computer and a, and, a, and a sound card, and that's pretty much it. Pretty right. much it. Yeah. And just a quick question, a geek question about the process. Do you make a, a scratch recording and then bring that to the studio and then the drummer uh, p- performs with the scratch recording or, or what's, what's, how does it work? A uh, scratch recording, you mean a, a, a demo? Or? Well, yeah, like, so, no, I mean, like, uh, when you're starting to record a song, mm-hmm. um, do you record a track with a click track, maybe just mm-hmm. playing the guitar and singing, and then bring that to a studio, he listens to that, he plays the drums, then mm-hmm. you go back, then you take that back home, and then you add the layers of uh, guitars and bass. Is that how it works, or is it something different? Yeah, I, um, I, I guess it depends on the song. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just me and a guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's a very complete and elaborate demo mm-hmm. uh, with me pro- programming the drums. And um, and I often end up keeping most of the keyboard stuff and some of the guitars on the uh, uh, on the um, uh, final version of the song. Mm-hmm. So it, it depends on uh, where I'm at in the uh, in the writing process uh, and how much I want the drummer or other music- musicians to contribute uh, mm-hmm. on the song. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, I've been uh, on all my albums. It's Henrik from from Airbag playing drums, so I know how he, I know his style and I know how what he will bring to the song. So mm-hmm. I always write and arrange the drums with him in mind and he obviously contributes a lot when he plays as well and we we come up with new stuff in the in the studio but um mm-hmm. yeah so 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 in some form or another he's playing on top of a uh, backing track and i mm-hmm. i mix the drums and add uh, the the um the final tracks later on i've listened to your uh your upcoming mini album through and, and it sounds wonderful uh the production sounds great i mean it really sounds um world class standard <laughs> you know um and and it's also very uh you can feel the like as you mentioned the homage to to pink floyd i think that's really uh cool that you kind of uh explored that on this album now you mentioned hmm. your website uh your or your your youtube page which i looked mm-hmm. up gilmoreish which is really cool and it seems to be very popular too. It's got a lot of people uh, watching your videos. It's very uh, helpful for guitarists mm. who want to uh, sort of figure out how Gilmore uh, gets his sound. So that's really mm. that's really great. Gilmore is definitely a a huge icon of guitar. Um, yeah. Just amazing. And uh, the the legacy of Pink Floyd is truly <laughs> it's pretty epic. It's pretty epic. He's a big uh, influence on you. Uh, are, there, are there other guitar players uh, that also are a big influence on you? Yeah, uh, there are many. Uh, I guess David Gilmore uh, is well, we had as I, as I, I mentioned earlier, we had this Pink Floyd tribute. So I had to learn all his stuff, and and Gilmerish, my my website and YouTube channel grew grew out of that. Uh, I had all this information that I compiled and and created a website. So he he's been a, a huge influence for me as I 
started to learn guitar and learn to create my own tone and and um uh yeah so but i but i i i grew up listening to ace Frehley from kiss ton Iommi, uh sack wild um billy gibbons is probably one of my biggest influences oh really okay yeah yeah uh, but i i listen to all kinds of, of different music one of my favorite contemporary guitarists is uh, marcus king which is a um uh, a fairly new uh, Nashville uh, blues uh, guitarist, a young guy who's uh, who's picked up the tradition of of uh, Leonard Skinner, the Allman Brothers, and uh, and CC Top. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm really into that old school blues rock kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, that goes back to all those bands, but also stuff like uh, like um, Free, um, Paul Kossov. Um, uh, Jimmy Page, of course. Do you have uh, Do you have any children? I have. I have a ten year old daughter. Okay, and is she uh, musically inclined at all? Yeah, she plays a bit of piano. Yeah, uh, and uh, I try to get her to uh, to get into Kiss, <laughs> <laughs> which, which has always been uh, my uh, my uh, favorite band. Yeah, uh, I took her to see them a few years back, uh, which was really special. Uh, Nice. Yeah, we dressed up uh, with makeup and everything, and oh, it was great. Uh, a great experience to to uh, to bring her to the concert and 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 have that experience together. But uh, she's listening to Spotify, uh, YouTube, and Discover yeah. Music. She she just learned who Kate Bush is. Oh, of course, yeah. from yeah. Stranger Things, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same yeah. with my children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my kids. Uh, I, I'm interested in, you know, their point of view on music, obviously, uh, like you and I are probably similar age range. And um, we're curious to to well, in, in a way, we're very we're very uh, lucky to have witnessed the evolution of music. I uh, am um, seeing from the 60s. Like I grew up uh, through in, into the seven, like I was born late 60s, in other words. And uh, so the 80s were, was a big, big decade, decade uh that I lived through. And I think you mentioned you did too, probably. <clears throat> and the seventies, of course, was uh, the end of the seventies was when I got into Prague, probably 78, I was getting into tubular bells and, and um, mm. yes. And Genesis uh, and rush a little later rush. Uh, so progressive music was, is a huge thing for me. And I've watched how technology has influenced music. Of course. I mm. mean, in, in those days, if you wanted to record an album, you had to spend a hundred thousand dollars, like you know, to sound like Pink Floyd, to have that kind of quality of sound. Now it's evolved so that you know, on a home computer, if you have a decent, uh, if you're decently experienced and have a good ear, you can make an album that sounds, you know, the same level of production. Um, but at the same time, uh, we, we've seen music become kind of devalued in a way where. It's so uh, easy to access. Um, I mean, back in when I was in, in the eighties, if I wanted or seventies, eighties, and I wanted to hear a, a band, I had to take a chance, buy the album, uh, in order to listen to it, or if a friend had it or whatever. Whereas now, if somebody says, "Hey, have you heard this band?" and then two mm. seconds later, you go on your phone and you're mm. listening to their latest albums, and mm. so we have in- instant access to all that music. I was sort of hoping my children would grow up. Because one of them's really talented with music, uh, I was hoping they would go into songwriting and production like I've always enjoyed. Uh, but but there's been so many uh, distractions, especially with video games and the internet. Mm-hmm. And uh, the video game culture is just completely enormous for for my boys, for example. It's just uh, it's the world is so different in many ways than we when we were growing up with music. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, 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 um, I feel that with my daughter as well. Uh, when I was ten years old, as she is now, uh, I sat in my room with my friends. We've been to the local record store. And we bought uh, a, a new album, and we could just sit and stare at the album cover before even <laughs> listening to the album. And then we discussed the songs, and we we um, we discussed the different lyrics, and uh, who's that guy, and everything. 
I I want her to experience that. Uh, I um, but at the same time, I I see how she enjoys music as well. Uh, she uses Spotify and and YouTube, and it's been much more of a consumer thing. Uh, but at at the same time, she, I'm sure she enjoys music as much as I do, but just in a different way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, if it's it's a, it's a bad thing, but um, but yeah, as you said, there's a lot of different distractions uh, as well. Mm-hmm. When I grew up, I had music. It's mm-hmm. it was either that or ride my bike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so and when I rode my bike, I rode to the local record store. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh and mm. but the kids today have so much more uh and uh and social media and everything so yeah yeah I, i've seen a lot of uh, debate on the, uh, the the kate bush thing and mm. and kids discovering her music uh through a tv series and even uh these short snippets on tiktok and everything but mm-hmm. And and people think uh, and the, the criticism that I've seen uh, sort of goes on uh, um, evolves around kids are stupid and kids doesn't understand art and uh, how can a TV series uh, bring to life an, a forty years old song and why don't kids go to a record store and and discover music like we did. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, it, when you when you see that episode or that TV series and you hear that song, they use music that reaches that audience and they listen to the track and they get other recommendations and they have this community where they they uh, discover music. So I'm not sure if everything is 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 a bad thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's just different. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah. I want I want my girl to to go to concerts and uh, play an instrument and and uh, and not consume music, but consider it as an art form. Right. As far as music scenes, um, which has always happened, I think, I mean, uh, throughout music history, I mean, the UK is where prog rock kind of originated. Um, and, and then at the same time, other prog rock scenes developed currently it seems uh to me anyways in scandinavia the whole area where you are that area of the world there's amazing uh progressive metal coming out like a lot of great bands uh and then also japan actually has a a lot of uh amazing bands that are uh, not even specifically progressive but a lot of metal that has progressive rock elements i've i've found you know so the music scenes um Give me a lot of hope, actually. <laughs> uh, mm. how, how do you like being part of that scene, that part of the world that you are? How do you like being part of that? Uh, it's. I think it's, uh, it's very exciting to see what's happening. Uh, when we started out, uh, there wasn't a lot of pr- uh, progressive bands uh, in, in Norway. So, so uh, I very much feel that we've been a part of uh, f- of that journey from the beginning and uh, our record label Charisma Records has been uh, when we started out with them I think we were one of the first bands they signed and now they've grown to be one of the most influential uh, pro- progressive labels in in uh, mm-hmm. Europe uh, so there's a lot of cool things cool bands cool artists that's um, uh, that's uh, coming out in in Norway Scandinavia and Europe uh, when we uh, when we tour we we we, we meet a very de- dedicated audience they still buy records they still want to uh, explore new music and uh, music is very much a big part of of their life so uh i'm i think we're very very lucky to to have that audience and that connection with the audience it's it's a very dedicated uh, audience but um at the same time it's um uh in the uh, in the 90s uh, late 80s and, and 90s we had this um wave of uh, black metal bands coming from norway Mm-hmm. And um, while they were touring most of the world and uh, selling tons of albums, they were completely unknown here in Norway. 
and Scandinavia. Mm. So I think, uh, and and that's that seems to be happening a bit now as well. Uh, it's 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 a media thing. It's it's a uh, it's a press thing uh, where local bands don't get the recognition recognition that they deserve. I think. Yeah. Pro- Norwegian and Scandinavian prog rock is what black metal was in the 90s. So uh, there's a lot of bands touring the world selling tons of albums, but don't get the recognition. Are you a big fan of being a, a touring musician? Do you really enjoy the road life? Uh, I'm not sure I would say that I'm a touring musician. Uh, we do uh, a few flying gigs uh, each year. Uh, it, it's 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 a long time ago since we uh, we did tours, um, but I enjoy playing live. I do uh, very much. Um, uh, we do festivals. We do some flying gigs uh, a, a few weekends, um, and I jo- enjoy obviously playing live music. But I also enjoy meeting our fans and talking to them and and getting that uh, first hand experience. I also enjoy writing, producing, recording. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a quick question. I wasn't certain. I obviously you're singing on your solo album. Um mm-hmm. in air in airbag, who sings in airbag? Uh that's uh Osle Tostrup. Oh, okay. Who's right. been the uh, the lead singer uh since the beginning. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I I actually did a a, um, a video a react to uh, an airbag song. Unfortunately, <laughs> it got it got blocked. It wasn't a video; it was just an audio. But it got okay. blocked like crazy, like it was blocked in most parts yeah. of the world. And as a result, it's had a very very low view rate, which is very disappointing because um, the whole point of doing react is just sharing your of your music. Mm-hmm. So I did uh, email your contact at charisma records charisma records is that right charisma mm. and mm. uh unfortunately he had no uh authority over that recording or whatever <laughs> so uh i'll probably have to try to find another airbag song that hopefully won't get blocked if i yeah. uh, react to it but uh um yeah how about yeah. that how about, how about you make a comment to us here uh on the channel about uh react uh, react channels like or react videos do you do you watch any react channels yourself uh i do i i often get uh get links sent to me uh and you need to watch this and i and i do it's it's uh it's fun uh, yeah. it is <laughs> to yeah, see yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh some people are are criticizing are very negative uh, some people are are crying it's uh huh. it's fun to watch yeah uh, the mm-hmm. whole React genre, um, like I had my channel, it's uh, it's the whole purpose of my channel was to focus on guitar, guitar lessons, and uh, gear, and uh, sort of like Gilmoreish, your your mm-hmm. YouTube channel. I started the channel out, and then my wife suggested, "Why don't you do some Reacts?" And I thought, well, I I I really don't like most pop music. The music of that nowadays, uh, I'm just not a big fan of hip hop. I'm not a big fan of. I, I mean, I appreciate any good song, but I thought, well, if I'm going to react, I'm going to react to to progressive rock. So I started doing that two years ago, and uh, it's almost overtaken my channel for the moment, anyways. And I've reacted to mm-hmm. over 600 songs, if you can if wow. you can imagine that, <laughs> and uh, a lot of them, a majority are progressive rock. Yeah. So um, so it really blows my mind that uh, my channel has been growing just doing reacts and and as i've been doing it more and more i've realized that uh this may be actually just the beginning of a wave uh of resurgence of music i don't know what you call it uh, uh it's something similar to how we grew up when there was music magazines mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. were cutting edge and they would they would be talking about new bands and it seems like the re- whole react genre thing is, is a, to me a resurgence of interest in discussing music and you mentioned uh, you would you know buy an album and sit in a in someone's living room and listen to a new album and discuss it look at the album i think uh reaction videos are actually the beginning of this resurgence of interest in 
discussing music. I mean, it's really that simple. It's, it's, it's just about discussing music. It's listening to it, talking about, you know, uh, parts of it, of uh, things you liked about it, the, the sounds, uh, the inspiration that it carries, you know, uh, so I'm pretty excited about reaction channels now. Um, yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right, and um, I, I think what you're doing is you're sort of uh, perhaps compensating for that community mm-hmm. uh, and sort of bringing back that uh, connection. Mm-hmm. Uh, people watching your videos has someone to share that experience. You're sharing that experience with mm-hmm. someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's the same thing when you watch uh, a, a podcast uh, uh, of uh, three guys sitting discussing an album or a band or a, a some some minutia stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, and you're you feel that you're part of something that you might have haven't been for for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I feel that myself. Uh, I all my friends were into my bands. But when I grew up, I I moved away. I got a job. I got a family. I got new friends, and they don't understand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so when I can I can sit down and watch a podcast every week with uh, someone on the other side of the planet sharing my yeah. passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I feel part of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Bjorn, thank you so much for this uh, interview. Is there anything uh, you wanted to? Uh, share with the audience that are if that if i hadn't asked you something and you're you're hoping to share something or uh no uh maybe i can plug something sure yeah uh my my website bjornadis.com um i have uh have the new album up there for uh for pre-order um you can order uh, signed copies and you can find my catalog there as well. And um, do uh, do visit me on Facebook and, uh, of course, uh, Gilmarish as well. Absolutely. Now, I'll put those links down below. And okay. uh, once again, it was really nice to meet you. And uh, all the best with your, your uh, new uh, mini album. And um, I guess um, I, what's on the future um, plans for you? Um, I will be doing some shows this fall, uh, also with Airbag, and we're uh, we're uh, currently writing uh, for the next Airbag album. Hopefully, we'll start recording that uh, sometime next spring. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that. <laughs> okay, yeah. thanks a lot, and uh, thank you. Well, have a have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon sometime. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.